Good morning and welcome. A special welcome to any visitors that we have with us today and to our radio listeners. Today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 698. We gather together, number 698. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. <clears throat> then the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily for the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The common thought most people have on faith is that it is something a person either has or they do not have. You either believe or you do not believe. And this much indeed is true. But if you do believe, if you do have the gift of faith, how strong is it? The apostles asked our Lord to increase their faith. 
And if faith can be increased, then the opposite holds true. It can decrease. Indeed, if faith is not properly exercised, then like a muscle that is not used, it will atrophy. Faith is very much like a fire. The fire lights and gives protection. But if that fire is not continually fed and tended, it will go out. And a person then will have what is called dead faith. Our Lord himself says that faith is necessary for salvation. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. One cannot go to heaven if one does not have faith. As we heard Habakkuk say in the first reading, the just man shall live because of his faith. And so if we have this gift of faith, we need to grow in that gift of faith. Faith is a virtue. The more you practice a virtue, the better at it you get. And faith is the theological virtue. We have three of those. Faith, hope, and charity. Faith is the theological virtue by which we believe in God and all that he has said and revealed and that Holy Church proposes for our belief. And to grow in our faith, there must be a desire for it. Do I desire to strengthen my faith, to grow in that? As with every desire, that desire must be put into action. And so I shall give you three ways, I believe the three most important ways one can grow in their faith. The first being, imitate what you see the apostles here. Ask for it. Pray to the Lord every day to increase your faith. Because faith is just that. It is a gift. It is not something we can just make for ourselves. Faith is a gift from God. It is a gift that enhances the intellect, allowing us to grasp truth and knowledge beyond our natural capacity. Faith is to the mind what like a telescope is to the eye. The eye can see much, but you put a telescope in front of it, it can see a lot more now, can't it? And that is what faith does for the mind. Every truth we are profess in the Apostles' Creed that we are about to say in a few moments is a supernatural truth. It is beyond our natural ability to prove these things. In order to accept them, in order to believe them and understand them, one needs a supernatural ability. And that is the gift of faith. And how we must pray for it to be increased, especially in those times where it is difficult for us to believe, or we are having trouble accepting a teaching of the church which speaks for God himself. We must believe everything that the church teaches without exception. And if we're having difficulty, then we must be like that father of the boy in the Gospel of Mark who told the Lord, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So that's number one. Pray that God may increase your faith. The second method, study your faith. God gave us a mind, an intellect, and reason. When we come to faith, we do not put our brains aside. That is what the arrogant believe and those who mock our faith think. Oh, you have to be blind faith. Wrong. Our faith is not a blind faith. There is reason behind everything you believe that we profess to believe. That is why when sharing the faith with a non-believer, it does you no good to quote the Bible at them. For that is a matter of faith. You need to begin with reason. You need to give them a reason in order to believe. And so it is with us. There is a why behind everything we profess to believe. Every Sunday, the Lord's Day, is a time of opportunity. It's called the Lord's Day for a reason, so that we can dedicate ta some time for studying our faith and growing closer to the Lord. How well can you love a person if you do not know them? The more you study your faith, the more you know about God, the better you will be able to love Him. I mentioned the creed just a moment ago. We are about to profess those 12 points of our faith. 
Do we just mindlessly recite them? Or is there, listen carefully to those words, is there something in there that you do not understand its meaning or do not quite understand? That would be a good place to begin. Go home, crack open the catechism, the index, look up what it means. But if you really want to shortcut the cheat sheet, ask me. Ask the priest. I'll give it to you right away. I wish my email box was flooded with questions on the faith. I could happily spend all days answering questions. It's my favorite thing to do as a priest right after celebrating the sacraments. But study your faith. We must study our faith. The final, the third way to grow in your faith is to defend your faith. Very many Catholics are reluctant to speak openly about the faith, especially when they hear it being detracted, not only because that natural fear we all carry of being the target of scorn and attack and reproach, but many can't do it because we are not in the practice of it. We are not sure how to defend our faith. We know that they are wrong, but we do not know how to say why they are wrong, which is why it's good to study. But the more you talk about your faith, talk about it amongst yourselves, amongst your friends and family, the more practice you will be to speak to others when the time arises. We must defend the faith. It will not defend itself. As our Lord, as St. Paul said to Timothy in the second reading, our Lord has not given us a spirit of cowardice, but one of power, love, and holiness, courageousness. These are the attributes of the spirit. Our Lord is referred to the, as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And every time you defend the faith, imagine this great lion is next to you. You have nothing to be afraid of, but defend the faith. And so those are the three ways. Pray to increase your faith. Study your faith. Defend your faith. In these three actions, you are practicing the faith. And like anything that is practiced, you become better at it. You become stronger in it. And your faith will grow. Our Lord said, let your light shine before men. Let it shine before others. That light he speaks of is the light of truth. The light of faith. And the more you grow in that faith, the more it will light your way through life to see and know God's presence with you, his will for you, and lighting not only your own path, but that light will give light to others, allowing them to see the truth and to know Christ and to come to him. For there is no other name other than he under heaven that we are saved except by faith in the name of Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made consubstantial with the Father. For him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, looking down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was in front of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on our third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Pardon again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
As faithful members of God's church, let us bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray for all our bishops. May they lead their people in ways of holiness through fidelity to the truth. We pray to the Lord. For all who work in the pro-life movement, we pray for an end to abortion, euthanasia, and all other attacks against human dignity. We pray to the Lord. For those in the judiciary, may they seek justice in all their decisions and uphold the rights of all people. We pray to the Lord. For all medical professionals, may they carry out their duties with compassion and dedicate themselves to preserving life in all its stages. We pray to the Lord. For all Catholic missionaries, may they bring the word of God to all people and lead all nations to Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all those affected by sickness, injury, violence, oppression, war, and natural disaster, may their sufferings lead them closer to the crucified Lord and inspire others to acts of charity and works of justice. We pray to the Lord. And for all those personal prayers and intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, increase our faith. Grant us the grace to always be pleasing to you. This we ask through Christ our Lord. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing number 251, Loving and Forgiving, number 251.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your command. Through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sin. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O oh Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith, remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, and they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice and his in his holy and venerable hand 
And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant him, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to suffer the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should end under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. <coughs> Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have the following announcements. Saints Philip and James Parrish will have their fried chicken dinner this Sunday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. All parishioners are invited to participate in the 27th annual Life Chain this Sunday at Highway 32 and 61 intersection from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Our parish will be hosting Missouri Right to Life President Steve Rupp on Sunday, October the 6th. He will speak at the DeBerg Center beginning at 6 p.m. Everyone is welcome. And our recessional hymn is number 673, Sing to the Mountains, number 673. The Lord be with you. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Go in peace.